When we talk about cell signaling, what we're really talking about is communication between cells. This communication is very important because what this is going to enable the cell to do is they are then going to be able to respond to changes, and those will be changes in the environment. When we refer to changes in the environment, this could include all different types of things. This could be changes in just the physical environment. So by that we mean temperature or pressure, changes in the amount of light, things of that nature. It could be chemical changes, a change in pH, or a change in other molecules that are present. Or it could just be responding to a change in a neighboring cell. So when we do talk about this communication, it is going to be important that first of all, cells are able to perceive or notice the signal or the message, if you will. And then after they perceive or notice that, they're going to have to be able to respond to that signal. So this is all about, again, communication. So one cell is going to be putting out a signal or putting out a message, and then we're going to want to be able to respond to that by doing something inside of the cell. If we talk about the different participants that are involved in this, we will have some cells which are going to be called signaling cells. And the signaling cells, those are the ones that are actually doing the talking. So by saying that they're doing the talking, these are the ones that are actually putting out the signal, or you could also call this the message. And we do have a special name for that signal or for that message. So the word that we use to describe that is going to be ligand, or some people say ligand. So that is an actual molecule. That will be what the um, cell is actually putting out. It is gonna manufacture or produce this, and then it sends that out. We're also going to have another cell, and sometimes it's the same one, but it's gonna be called the target cell. And the target cell is the cell that is supposed to perceive the signal, and it's supposed to respond to it in some way. So it gets the message, and then we get some kind of effect from that. There will be certain molecules within that cell, and sometimes they're located on the cell surface. So I'm drawing one here on the cell surface. Sometimes they're actually inside the cell as well, but these molecules here, these are going to be what we call receptors. The receptors themselves are going to be responsible for detecting or binding the ligand. Okay, so those are the two um, types of cells that are gonna be involved. We've got one that's putting out the signal, another one that's going to detect or perceive that and respond to it. The ligand is the signal. It is an actual molecule. There's a variety of molecules that it can be. And then the receptor is going to be the molecule that actually binds to that and then causes this response. We can also talk about types of signaling. The different types that we do have are mostly differentiated from each other based on the distance involved. And that's gonna be the distance from the signaling cell to that target cell that it's trying to affect. So again, we do wanna keep distance in mind as we go through and we talk about these different types. The first type that I wanna talk about is what we call paracrine signaling. Paracrine signaling is mostly classified as signaling that occurs over a very short distance. So this is gonna be a signaling cell and a target cell that are pretty close together. And this is because the signal or the ligand is actually gonna move by diffusion. So since it's diffusion, we don't want to have it have to travel really too far. And so if we just draw a picture of how this is going to work, we have our signaling cell. The signaling cell is going to put out or produce that um, ligand. So the ligand is going to actually exit the signaling cell. So that's what we see happening here. And then it's moving 
in some direction by diffusion. And then we're also going to have a target cell. So this is my target over here. And that target cell, usually on the surface of the target cell, we're going to have a receptor. So here I have a little receptor and that receptor is meant to bind to one of these ligands. And when that ligand binds, then we do get that effect that we want. So paracrine signaling, we are talking about very short distances. So the signaling cell and the target cell are gonna be close to each other. And then you also have diffusion involved in how that signaling molecule or the ligand actually moves from the signal cell to the target cell. A very specific type of paracrine signaling is going to be what we call autocrine signaling. And the big difference here is that auto means self. And that does classify this. Really, you're going to have, in this case, the same cell is both the signaling cell and it's also going to be the target cell. So another way to say this is that you've got the same cell both producing and detecting the signal. So if we were to draw this the same way that we drew the paracrine signaling, we've got this signaling cell. The signaling cell is going to be putting out a ligand and that ligand is going to diffuse some out of that cell. But then on the surface of this same cell, there is going to be a receptor that can bind to that. So what we will see is that these signaling molecules are going to come back here and bind to that same receptor. So you have this signaling molecule that comes out, but then it ends up binding back to that same target cell. Paracrine signaling, um, it is a short distance. Autocrine signaling is obviously going to be a very short distance as well, because in this case, the ligand exits the cell, but then it comes right back. It's detected on the surface of that cell. A third type of signaling is what we call endocrine signaling. And in contrast to the previous two that we talked about, endocrine signaling is characterized by long distances. So these are long distances between the signaling cell and the target cell. Now with this one, what's going to happen is we are going to have the signaling cell that is going to produce a ligand. So we still have that being produced and that ligand is going to exit the cell. So we see it actually go out. But then what happens in this case, that ligand is going to actually enter the bloodstream. So it enters the bloodstream, it has to actually travel to another location. And once it gets to that other location, it will actually be able to be detected by the target cell. So the target cell is still gonna have a little receptor on the surface, and that receptor is going to bind to the ligand, and we're gonna get that desired effect that we want. But notice this great distance between where we actually produce the signal and then where that signal actually ended up. Sometimes this is described as kind of a public broadcasting system. And what we mean by that is that we have this one cell that is putting out this little ligand or this little signaling molecule, but then it travels to very distant places in the body and it's going to produce that effect in those other places. If we compare that to the paracrine and the autocrine signaling, that is really just a localized discussion or talking between cells. Again, the endocrine, we're talking about much more broadcasting around the body or around the organism. The fourth type of signaling is going to be what we call direct cell signaling. And direct cell signaling is characterized by contact between cells and direct connections between cells. So we're going to have two cells that are located right there next to each other. And then these two cells are going to have actual connections between them. And as far as what those connections are called, 
That would be plasmodesmata if we're talking about plants. Or if we're talking about animal cells, that's going to be your gap junctions. So both of these are little channels that run from the cytoplasm of one cell to the cytoplasm of the next. And these small channels would allow for small signaling molecules to actually pass through them and run from one cell to the next cell. So a lot of times the signaling molecules that are involved in this, we do have a special name for them. They can be called intracellular mediators. So these intracellular mediators, they will have to be small because they are going to have to pass through these small cytoplasmic channels. But once they do pass through the channels, they will elicit or cause a certain response in that neighboring adjacent cell.